All right, let's look at the Browns and the Steelers. Two points in favor of the Steelers in this one, who, again, still have playoff aspirations. 40 and a half is our total in this one, as we were recording this as well. Jadavian Clowney packed up his stuff and went home. He uh, got sent home from the Browns facility and apparently said on the way out, there's a 95% chance I won't be back here next year. So there's that for the dysfunctional Browns team that is uh, actually the defensive side has started to play well over the last six weeks of the season. So good for them uh, heading into this. Adam, if we take a look, um, look, Steelers, they're fine. They're not good. Pickett certainly is coming around. I think Pickett might actually have a future in this league and all of that. Browns showed signs of life at least a little bit last week in all of this. Do we think the Steelers have it in them to win at margin in any game? I don't have it in the account. If someone told me they wanted to take eight, eight and a half with the Browns in a 40 and a half total, I guess I probably wouldn't talk them off of it. No, I, I agree with that. I think I also would ask anybody looking at this game, show me how we're getting to 40 and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, because the Pittsburgh Steelers, even in looking good, even in the games they've won, how have they done it the last couple of weeks? They've done it with late touchdowns, one that allowed them to win 13 to 10 and one that allowed them to win 16 to 13. And I don't know that I see how either of these teams is putting up 20 and or 20 mm -hmm. plus to be able to push this thing up to 40 and a half. So I think, you're, you're right. Uh, I think the teaser leg makes sense because of what I'm talking about yep. here that I don't see either of these teams getting eight and a half points apart from the other. Steven, two in favor of a Steelers team that, again, does at least still have somewhat of a hope of making the playoffs. Yeah, I think it's a Steelers line that is inflated because they are still alive for the playoffs and are playing a team that isn't because under normal circumstances, this is not the correct line to me. I, I like Brown's teaser up to eight and a half. Uh, I even like Moneyline Parlay on the Browns with Tampa Bay first half. You can get plus 450 on that. Uh, if you want to go so bold as to a three-leg money line parlay with some dogs, you can add the Carolina team at, and make it plus 1250. So Cleveland money line, Carolina money line, Tampa Bay first half at plus 1250 or better. Uh, so those are a couple of dabbles I'll do on the money line mm -hmm. side of things. But yeah, this is this is a Browns team that finally had a normal game last week. No winter weather and you know a few more weeks for Deshaun Watson to kind of get some more reps and get back into the swing. And they posted above average yards per play against a good Washington defense. And the Browns defense continued its late season turnaround, less than four yards per play allowed against a below average offense, admittedly. But that seems like a similar spot to me here against Pittsburgh. What's really confusing to me, guys, are the advanced stats on Pittsburgh because – over the past month, they've scored 16 points or fewer in three of the past four games. But in that span, they're top five in EPA and success rate, top 10 across the board, including run or pass. So I it doesn't that doesn't make any sense to me based on what we've seen on the field. It's very strange. I can't explain it, to be honest with you, but I'm going to trust my eyes here and take Cleveland on the teaser leg here at plus eight and a half. Yeah, I mean, it's just very, very, very tough for me to get to get on the on the Pittsburgh side here. I'm I'm with you. I think that maybe just because they have something to play for that that's automatically swinging to their side. Where you know, again, this should be a pick them under normal circumstances. Yeah, most, most likely. <laughs>